It's been a long, 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 long day. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I apologise for my appearance and general scruffiness. Um, I've just had a very long day at school, um, hence why I look so tired. I have like tried to re really put some concealer on, but it's just been a general bad day. Have my Spanish speaking mock and because we don't really do much Spanish speaking practice, it just did not go how I how I envisioned it to go. It didn't go how my German one did. Um, but then my actual mock for my Spanish was a lot better than my German. <laughs> It was just not good and you know me I'm literally the most annoying perfectionist ever so I'll let you know um, how badly I do uh, when, I, when I get it back but today we're going to be talking about science again because on my science video there were so many questions and actually Chris who I mentioned in my last video actually reached out to me and said hey let's do a collab because I feel like together we can really really make a difference um, so he on his channel he's going to be and i'm going to be rigging this out i'm really sorry i'm literally my brain is mush it's like capital mush he's going to be illustrating how easily you can miss grades if you get complacent explaining how the grading works for science so you actually know like what the breakdown is because there's no point in revising if you don't know what you're revising for and showing out why if you get one again a star you need to be getting top marks on your controlled assessments and how to manipulate your control assessments a little bit so you can get those top marks um but if you are aiming for an a star i hate to break it for you but you need to be revising now like as soon as you've watched this video you need to go and revise i started revising for my gcse's um after february half term not like loads but like quite a lot more than i'm doing now actually um not only because i don't really have time and i'm sat here filming this video instead of revising but we're just not going to think about my school career at the moment because it really just feels like a bit of a hot mess and the building's back so if you are aiming for an a star i assume that you are very good at science and you know the content really well and you're very good at understanding and learning the content but i'm afraid for an a star that's not enough you need to be so hot on the exam technique and i'm telling you now just being a little bit sloppy on your exam technique can cost you the grade um, you can know everything there is to know about alkanes and alkenes and cracking and gravity and moments and whatever else it was that we learned at GCSE but you will not get a star if you don't know how to use the mark schemes and the exam boards. Now before I start talking about how I went about this I understand that it's changing but the same technique still applies there'll still be specimen papers on the website and you can still use the old spec. All of my friends that do it at A level are on a new specification this year and they have literally just used all of the old specification papers because they're very similar questions because there's not really much they can change with science but I just want to go through where the past papers are on the website and also how you can use them properly because a lot of people are like well I've done all the past papers but they didn't really help so there are three ways with which you can do past papers you have open book open time open book close time and closed book close time personally I tended to do mine closed book open time because I tended to finish them early anyway I'd say a normal past paper a 60 minute one would probably take me about 45 minutes if but I will admit some of them I did really lazily like just sat on my bed or whatever you don't want to be doing that you want to make sure that you mimic an exam setting it, even if you're doing it open time mimic an exam setting and make sure that when you are doing them your full focus is on that past paper and you do it to the best of your ability don't like do what I did and like scribble down notes and stuff make sure you fully put my god this house is literally just noise central or you fully put the effort in to every single one of your past papers now when I say fully put the effort in here's what I mean you go through all of the questions once and you answer them to the complete best of your ability go through and check them again as if you would do in a paper and then get your mark scheme out and be harsh on yourself if you have missed what the mark scheme wants the examiner won't give it to you so don't give it to yourself thinking oh yeah I would have got that please don't do that be harsh on yourself do it in exam conditions and if you haven't got the answer right, what I want you to do is get the mark scheme and write out the exact points for the mark scheme for that answer that you missed, exactly as the exam board wanted it, and circle that question or put a star or highlight it. And I want you to keep all of your questions in a like one of those concertina folders. What I used to have is I had nine little sections, one for C1, C2, C3, P1, P2, P3, B1, B2, B3, and every time I did a past paper, I would do it to the best of my ability, most of the time, and I would highlight and circle the questions that I got wrong, and 
after a while, the more that I did the past papers, the less I needed to think about it because the questions are the same. Always, always notice the trends because the students that get A stars are the students that notice the trends and the patterns within the past papers, not the students that know the content really well. It goes the same for any subject. Um, there are always going to be trends in the exam questions. For English, for example, I was very clever in that I noticed the characters that they'd asked and the characters they hadn't and the themes that they'd asked and the themes that they hadn't and the poems that they'd asked and the poems that they hadn't in recent years and they're very predictable, they're predictable people so you know play to that strength. Yes if you've got a new spec it might be slightly more difficult but look at the specimen papers, look at what their, look at what the style of question is going to be like and really use past papers to your advantage. For science I cannot stress how important they are and I don't mean getting them copying out the mark scheme being like yeah I would have got that by all means at first if you're if you haven't revised anything and you want to see where your weak areas are go for it do a past paper but what I would recommend mainly is leaving your past papers until like after you've revised the content don't do the past papers before because not only would you have wasted them because you didn't know the answers you'll feel disheartened um what I did actually when I first started revising is I did a past paper for all three without notes and saw which bits I was really just didn't remember from what we'd studied and then I started my revision there and then by the time I'd finished I'd focus on those areas more and I was getting it got to the point by the time I'd finished all of the past papers and there was a lot um, I was getting like 58, 59, 60 and in pretty much all of my science exams I got full UMS so I must have done pretty well in my science exams and that's because I knew exactly what the question was asking there was a couple in our year group I won't lie that were just really bizarre but as long as you know what the question's asking and what you need to write it's quite easy for example there was a question on um like isolation and natural selection um and i think it what's it called Spe speciation is that what it's called um there was a five marker on that on pretty much every b2 paper and i learned the five marker like what's it called the mark scheme so there's geographical isolation there's environmentally different um environments on both sides natural selection occurs on both sides due to multiple alleles um, and they evolve as different species and their characteristics adapt to their environment and then, then at some point they can no longer interbreed together successfully and have offspring and hence their different species see how I still know that even though I haven't done biology for a year that's because I learnt my mark schemes so basically what I'm saying is to sum up do them like be harsh on yourself don't just do them and like check the mark scheme be harsh on yourself um do them close notes if you can if you're really desperate use your notes but try and do them without notes and try and emulate an exam environment while you're doing them don't sit on the sofa in front of the tv doing them don't like do anything like that and the other thing that me and chris were talking about that you know is something that we don't like to address but it's something that's true I was, I'm blessed in that my school is very good, it's very high in the league tables, our, our school gets really good GCSE results, obviously not every school in the country is like that, and I'm not trying to say that you, like people are like in theory because they go to a different school, I'm not saying that because it's just circumstances and all of this sort of thing, but as Chris said, not all countries in the school are as nice as yours, and I think it's easy for students to forget that they're not just competing with the other students in their class or even their year, but all 700,000 GCSE students in the country. The students in the worst bottom of the league tables are in direct competition with students at places like Eton, which is deeply unfair, but although it sounds negative, I think it's important for students to appreciate who they're competing with and the completely different class of education these kids are receiving. So they're going to have to understand that they need to fight for the top grades. So I think here perspective is really important. For me, I knew that some of the people I was in lessons with were like, obviously not the cleverest people in the country but very clever people so I was sure that if I stayed at the top of my class I would hopefully get an A star but obviously if you go to a school where the league tables are not so high and the standard of education isn't as high um, that I've been blessed and fortunate to have then maybe you being the top of your class would still only be a B and you really need to push yourself. Um, if you want to know about pushing yourself and really like proving people wrong and becoming coming from an environment where people have told you that you're going to fail and where people around you aren't doing very well please go and watch Ibs <laughs> he goes to Cambridge and go and watch some of his videos because he is literally so inspirational he came from a school where they t kept telling him he was destined to fail 
um, and got A star, A star, A, A level. So go and watch Ibs. I'll link him down below if I remember. But if not, it's just Ibs Mo. He goes to Cambridge and he really deserves more subscribers. And if you like me and you like university vlogs, you'll love him as well. Anyway, back on to topic. Um, there are some questions that Chris um, has kind of seen in my comments that are like really common questions. So I'm going to answer those and then hopefully that will give you some perspective on you know what sort of schools there are because obviously my school is different to everyone else's but so how many students were in your science class at GCSE I had 27 people in my group and there were four groups of 27 in a year I'm not sure how big that is a class size in regards to other people but for me that's like the average class size I had all the way through year 7 to year 11 was about 27 28 maybe 30 if it was a really big class um, how many hours of science a week were you taught for? Oh my gosh, I don't actually remember. No, I need to think about this now. Let me think about this properly because I don't want to tell you um, the wrong thing. From what I remember, over the two weeks, I had a double and a single of each subject. So I had a double and a single of physics, double and a single of chemistry, double and a single of biology. So obviously, say if someone had a double every... Um, two weeks that's three hours less a week so then when you add that up over the year that's 26 times 3 which is oh my gosh 60 78 78 hours less a year which is a lot of hours when you add it up so if you feel like you're not getting many science lessons or if your school is very like blase with science you need to be putting in those extra hours outside of school because you've got to remember that you're competing with people People probably had way more lessons than me, like at sixth form, I have 12 frees over two weeks, some people don't have any frees, so then I'm competing with people that have had a lot more lesson time than me. Um, what was behaviour like in your lessons, and did the teacher often have to stop the lesson to deal with that behaviour? Behaviour in my lessons was literally fine, it was just like a couple of odd chats, I'm really lucky to go to a school where people are just not disruptive and not annoying at all, people are really kind and sweet, so in that respect I was very lucky, um, but I can see that in a lot of schools, it can be quite distracting when you've got really, really disruptive people in your lessons. So if you have really disruptive people in your lessons, perhaps ask the teacher if you can go and do work somewhere quietly, or if you can wear like noise cancelling headphones when, when you're doing work by yourself. Um, but I was really lucky in that the behaviour in my lesson was really good. And I know that even people talking distracted me, even though I must say I talked a lot <laughs> in biology, just because I really didn't like biology. But the talking really distracted me, so... If you are in that situation, definitely make sure that you're doing some extra work in a place where you're not being distracted. Did you have specialist teachers for each of your sciences? Or did you have a general science teacher? I had specialist teachers and I had specialist lessons. But some of my friends, they just have like science lessons and then they flip between the subjects. And I know that that can be really distracting and also not very good because you're not having all of the subject in your mind like all the time. So like say if you do the chemistry at the start of the year, then you're going to have forgotten that by the time you get to, by the time you get to like the time where you need to sit your exam. So I had specialist teachers, but some of my teachers taught more than one science. So... Um, my chemistry teacher for a while she also teaches biology and my physics teacher also taught a bit of biology and like you know what I mean like there was but they taught me the special lesson that I had did your teachers run any additional revision sessions how often and when in the school year did they start running them I didn't have any revision sessions for any of my subjects apart from English literature and even then it was once every week from this time last year I think um, our school wasn't very hot on the whole extra revision thing. Our school was like, you just do your own revision. They gave us study leave. They were like, it's your exam results, so it's your time to do what you want. We never had extra science revision sessions or anything like that. You could ask for extra like time at lunch with the teachers, but we never ever had revision sessions. So as you can see, you might be sat there thinking, wow, like she's so similar to my school. Or you might be thinking, wow, like I literally have like way less lesson time than that. And my teachers aren't specialised and all of this stuff. And that's not your fault. You can't help what school you go to. But what you can help is how much work you put in. And you need to put things in perspective and be like, right, everyone around me is getting D's and E's. And just because I'm getting a C, if I want an A star just because I'm the best in my class doesn't mean that I'm the best in the country. That's what you've always got to think. You've always got to think you're not competing with the people in your year, you're competing with the people all across the country that want to get the same grades. That's what our teachers always used to say to you. It's like you need to be at the top because if you're not at the top at this school, you can't expect to be at the top anywhere. You need to be constantly on your guard, constantly 
putting things in perspective and I feel like a bit of perspective can be negative I know it's negative to think oh your school you know isn't high on the lead tables or whatever but I think a bit of perspective can really help push you in the right direction but to sum up this video past papers are vital and also perspective is really vital I hope that these statistic not statistics like facts and stuff have helped you sort of put science a bit more in perspective and I hope that these sort of revision hacks have been somewhat useful and if you want to go and watch Chris's video I will link him down below because his video will also be really useful if you're studying for any science of any specification and I think that's about it I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it was of some use to you if it was then do be sure to give it a thumbs up and leave some video requests down below and I will see you very soon with another revision video bye guys Mwah.